Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode two of our new studio beginner guide. Today we're going to go over spawning parts and changing their properties. Roblox gives us five base parts to spawn in. If you are on the home tab and you click on this part, it's just going to spawn in a block. We could click control Z to delete that block. But if we click this drop down arrow, it will give us five options on different shapes that we would like to spawn in a block, a sphere, a wedge, corner wedge and cylinder. Let's go ahead and spawn in a block and then see what we can do with it built into Roblox. So we'll zoom in on over here. And as we said in the previous video, this is our visual place and this is where everything is actually stored. So right here, we see the part that we just spawned in. And down here, we see all of the properties of that part. It is mostly self-explanatory, so we'll go through it kind of quickly. First up, brick color. Obviously, the color of the part, if you click it, you could select any of these colors and see it change in real time. Let's make it green. Now we have cast shadow. This just allows the block or disables the block from casting a shadow. This is another color picker, but it's more in depth. If you don't like any of the base Roblox colors, say we wanted this shade of green, but a little bit darker, maybe more towards white. It just lets you go a bit more in depth or use exact HTML codes. Up next is our material. This is another drop down, and Roblox gives us a ton of different materials to choose from. We can also make our own, but we're not going to get into that today. Let's say we want this to be asphalt. Well, that doesn't look good, so let's go back to gray. And there we go. Roblox has a whole bunch of different materials, and once you start stacking things up with each other, for example, glass, and then go to our next property, material variant, we're not going to get into that today. But the one after that is reflectance. We can boost this all the way to one. And now our part is super reflective, always based off of your skybox, which is another thing we could get into later. But let's put that down. We'll go right in the middle, 0.5. And since this is glass, we have another one called transparency. Let's bring this up. And now we can slightly see through the part. This is how you're going to pull off most of the effects that you want to do with any part. For example, if we just made this glass, it wouldn't look that good. But now that we've added reflectance and transparency, you could use this as a window. Now, 90% of the time, you won't really use any other properties than that. All of this down here does matter, but I've been building for four years and probably been in here 50 times. And over the course of four years, that's a uh, that's not a lot <laughs> right here you can change the size of the part if you know the exact numbers you want in the next episode we're going to get into all of the part tools so you'll be able to do this way easier this is the position of the part really handy if you want to copy this position and paste it into another part so they exactly line up pivot offsets i don't think i've ever touched in the whole four years can collide is pretty cool right now if you play the game just by clicking the little play arrow your player can collide or can touch this part. As you can see, we're standing on top of it. If we select this part and scroll down to that can collide and we turn it off, now the player cannot interact with this part. That's very nice for optimization or if you just have maybe a door you want to be able to walk through so you don't have to script it to open. Just a really nice feature. Can touch you'll only use once you start scripting. Anchored is super important. 99% of the time want to check that box. You can also click it up here. This basically means the part is going to stay wherever you put it. So if it is anchored and I raise the part into the sky like this, it will stay there. Whether I play the game, jump on it, do whatever I want. If it's not anchored, once I play the game, it will fall. And if there's no base plate, it will fall into the abyss. The rest of this stuff is not going to matter if you're a builder. But guys, that was parts and properties. I'll see you in the next one where we talk about part tools.